Joe Bazell's with us from PlayIllinois.com to talk a little bit more about uh, gambling, sports gambling 101. And I know a lot of people have gone to uh, sports gambling with the machines being down or whatever, and it's absolutely fun. I tried it for the first time six months ago, and I'm absolutely hooked. I don't mind admitting that whatsoever. It's been a blast. And Joe, a lot of good things to know when it comes to sports gambling. And we're going to talk a little bit about prop bets today. Uh, that's one that uh, it has been uh, a great source of pride and for frustration for me all at the same time. But what exactly first is a prop bet? Yeah, so a prop bet is sort of a bet. It can be a, sort of a game within the game. Um, it's often focused on individual players. So for example, uh, you know, the Texans are playing the Bears this weekend. You may see a prop line on Deshaun Watson say over or under two and a half passing touchdowns. So I think I'll take the over on that one. Um, but, you know, it can be stuff like that. It can be rushing yards, receiving yards, et cetera. So that's player props, but then there's also t sort of game props, for lack of a better term, and that is sort of just betting on specific things to happen within a game. Like, for example, will the Bears or the Texans score first? Or, you know, there, there can be lines such as, will the Rams beat the Patriots by between 6 and 12 points tonight? And it'll have a certain line um, to go with that. So it's sort of just betting on more specific things to happen. And then I'm sure people have heard about Super Bowl prop betting, and that's a whole nother that's a whole nother discussion because it gets pretty crazy with the type of bets and just the sheer amount that you can bet. That's not normal for the you know, average NFL game. But yeah, it's just sort of, you know, another way to bet on a game that's not a parlay or it's not just a straight side or a total, so to speak. Joe, what do people think about the experts that is think about prop bets? I mean, do they do a lot of those prop bets or do they shy away from those, the pro gamblers? Yeah, so I was kind of harsh on parlays last week because it's not a great way to make money over a sustained amount of time. Prop bets is actually, that is, um, I read it's the one area where bookmakers consistently lose money, which means that people win money. Um, and the reason for that is just, it's kind of, bookmakers don't have, frankly, enough time or resources in a lot of cases to make these lines as educated um, or put as much thought into them as, you know, a normal spread or a total because not as many people are betting on them. So I personally think and have spoken to people who say it's sort of a market inefficiency. Um, and if you really do your homework on some of these prop lines, you know, David Montgomery rushing yards against the Texans and you see, for example, I don't know, the Texans defense against the run and, and who's injured and whatnot. If you put a couple, I don't know, more time into researching a bet than you otherwise would, there's a good chance that you're actually researching it more than the bookmakers are in this case, so that can give you an edge. Oh, wow. Yeah, because that's exactly what I did when the Lamar Jackson prop bets came out. I know a lot of the uh, points bet, and I think DraftKings, too, also ran a special with Lamar Jackson specifically. And I think there was a lot of doubt into that because he was coming off the COVID list. And he, of course, is a running quarterback and averaging about 55, 60 yards a game. And I believe the line was 56 on that. I did my homework on that, just like you said, and found out that Dallas's rushing defense was one of the worst in the NFL. And even with the COVID, I decided to go on the over, and I'm sure glad I did. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, sort of my philosophy with it is when you're looking at a spread or a total, I mean, I encourage people to do their homework and their research, but I would just say that there are people who the bookmakers do this for a living and they have very sophisticated algorithms and formulas that they put into this. Um, and for prop bets, they, they use a formula, but I think it's normally just as simple as like their average per game versus whatever, you know, defense they're playing. But there's a lot of other factors that go into it. For example, like let's say someone on the Ravens offensive line is hurt or they they just got somebody back or injuries on the Cowboys side. There, there are a lot of edges that you can get um, if you just do a, put a little more time into it, which again, I, I would encourage people to do that for any bet, but I think it's probably a futile thing to do if I'm being honest for a lot of bets. But I think with props, you can definitely, it's sort of the one area where you have a chance maybe to outsmart the bookmaker. Exactly. I think that you see a lot of uh, professional players that, that you know are always going to do something like a uh, case in point in Aaron Rodgers or a Patrick Mahomes. You know they're always going to probably get between 250 and 275 yards. Sometimes I've seen their lines as high as 313 yards, and that gets a little tough. But certainly – I think you can make an argument that just about every time out, you're going to see these guys, even against elite defenses, get at least 250, 260 yards. And that's usually what their prop is when they're playing an elite defense. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and not every line, you know, is, yeah, I'll use this 
terminology, I guess. These prop bets are often what are referred to as soft lines. And a soft line means that not a lot of people are betting on something and therefore it hasn't sort of been hammered into place and that it can fluctuate in either direction based on what action is happening. And that is beneficial for the consumer because there's not a lot of quote unquote smart money going into some of these bets. And if you, yeah, like I said, if you really dig in, um, you can find some advantages and, you know, let's say tonight's Thursday night game, right? Thir uh, Patriots versus Rams. I believe a ton of people are going to be betting on this, the spread and the totals for that. And so those are pretty educated lines that are, that have, a, you know, a lot of betters, professional betters and bookmakers have put thought into them. But if you're looking at off the top of my head, I don't know if legal books will list this, but let's say Cam Akers rushing yards. I doubt that many people have put a ton of research into this. So that's sort of what's known as a soft line in the industry. And that's something that can be taken advantage of. How important is weather as we get here in the month of December? And we haven't seen too many bad weather games, but obviously snow and rain and a lot of forecasts, especially this weekend. How important is it to keep track of the weather when you're thinking of a prop bet? I think it's definitely important. Um, I would say wind is a really big one, more so than snow, which is like, kind of sounds weird. But if you're looking at sort of passing props and taking overs, I would just definitely look at the wind because historically that has tended to have more of an effect than just snow or cold weather itself. Um, rain as well, but I think wind with the combination of rain or snow, uh, that, you know, I, it's weird. I think sometimes people can put too much emphasis into that. Sometimes you can put not enough emphasis, but I would say definitely check the wind if it's like 40 degree gusts or whatever that's probably something you want to or you know maybe something you want to take an under on a receiver or a passer and maybe it enhances the running back's value and vice versa have you had a chance to look at any of the prop bets this weekend and if so are any jumping out at you that you should be <laughs> I, on? I actually haven't because as you know i'm going on vacation tomorrow but if you <laughs> so sorry i'm not very helpful in this way i uh, definitely yeah I, I will say this this is not a prop bet i'm taking Texans one, minus one and a half um, against the Bears because I think that's going to get hit up to three by the time kickoff happens and it's Thursday, so I would take that. But unfortunately, I can't be that much of a help this week on that one. Yeah, exactly. But uh, you know, while you can be a help on tonight's game, anything going with New England and the Rams? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm rolling with the Rams. Um, I just think that they're – normally I, I go super hard into the data or whatever, but I just think the Rams are a really good team that haven't – I don't know. The NFC is there for the taking. And I think the Patriots are coming off a huge win against the Chargers. I technically like sort of the, or I typically like sort of the bounce back candidate. And I know the Rams won last week, but I just think they have so much more firepower than the Rams. Um, and I think that the, or excuse me, than the Patriots. And I think the Patriots are sort of due for a clunker. I don't think they're as good as their 45 to nothing win over the Chargers, even though I was wrong on them last week, but. Well, the other part of this is, of course, I, I, I have been following your a little streak as far as, uh, you know, bouncing back. I think that's a really good philosophy. As a matter of fact, I've used that very profitably. I'll give you all the credit for that. But I, I totally agree with you on New England. There seems to be a lot of mediocre teams in the NFL this year. They're not good. They're not bad. New England's coming off that massive win. But L.A. has a heck of a defense. And Cam Newton's not going to have as easy a time, you know, moving the ball against the Chargers as he is against the Rams. Yeah, thank you for credit on that bounce back strategy. I think I'm going to try to dive in and see if there's, you know, if that's uh, analytically supported. But sort of to, to your point, I think it's my philosophy is that there is so much parity in the NFL that, you know, these teams, it, it, I think there is a value created when someone loses or wins by a lot because we just as it's human nature to sort of see what just happened and predict that trend. But really, I think we actually put too much emphasis on that. Hence why I think the bounce back theory is a good one. And just if you believe sort of in the motivation after you lost, if a team is pretty good or at least decent and they just got their brains beat in, the thinking is that they'll be more focused and whatnot. I think there may be something to that as well. And finally, I just wanted to ask you real quick, uh, kind of off the topic a little bit about the Jets and the Raiders in that game yesterday. You know, I realize that even though the Jets are kind of an awful, well, they are an awful team. They're 0-12 right now. But a lot of money still gets played on them basically because of the fact they're in New York City or stuff. How bad was it a beat of, if anybody had the Jets on the money line? Was that a big uh, a number at all? Or, or were, were a lot of people on that? Because I was thinking about it myself. and I think it was plus 480, I think, was the money line at the beginning of that game. Mm -hmm. You know, I thought about it myself and go like, you know, they got to win sometime and they lose it on the last play like that on a stupid call that costs the defensive coordinator his job there. You think a lot of people lost some money on that? 
I, I think some did. I don't think a ton. I think the quote unquote sharp betters, which is like professionals or people who have a, a long track record of winning. Um, I think a lot of them take the Jets on the spread every week. I think it was 8.5. And I'm pretty sure they covered. Uh, yeah, they covered that spread. But in terms of money line, I think that's normally just like New York Jets fans or whoever. I don't think like your Chicago, your average Chicago better is going to take Jets money line. But I do think there's a good amount of action on them on the spread every week. And that's, you know, I, I play the Jets sometimes on the spread too, because I think even though they're horrible, it doesn't mean they can't cover a number, even though they can't win a game. Um, so I would, I would probably say that's essentially localized to that New York, New Jersey area. Listen, Joe, great stuff. And as always, and uh, where can people find out more about uh, your columns on playillinois.com? Yeah, just head to playillinois.com. Um, they're all right there, all of our articles, analysis, et cetera. And you can sign up for uh, for the sports books there and get really good deals. I know DraftKings has a really good deal going right now if you sign up through us. So, uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. All right, terrific, Joe. Listen, thanks a lot. We'll look forward to talking to you again next week as we get even closer to the playoff drive for a lot of